Hello everyone, how's it going? I am the Average Guy 1983. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the tools I've been able to obtain from my Fab Kitchen project. And I'm also going to talk to you guys about what I'm going to be doing in the springtime on the channel. So let's go ahead and roll the intro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go ahead and get started with the first tool that I have here in this little uh, DIY fab kitchen. Uh, before I get started though, I would like to say that this video is gonna be a little bit lengthy. I'm not really sure how much because I'm barely starting the video, but I promise that I would try to reduce the uh, amount of content that I put up for this video under editing. And I also do wanna apologize for any noise you may hear in the background, like people talking loud, people laughing, fire department, there's just things that are out of my control when it comes to noise. But I'll try to uh, edit as much noise out as possible through Filmora 11. So let's go ahead and get started. So a router table is one of the most important tools you would wanna have if you wanna start a uh, DIY fab kitchen. Whether you want to just do it for yourself like me, like I'm just doing it as a DIY just to have, you know, keep myself busy and stuff or if you wanna start a business making things like speaker rings and other type of templates, having something like this would be really convenient. There are different brands of tables you can get, including router lifts and stuff like that, but I really like the Jessam brand because a lot of the people that I watch on YouTube and that I admire a lot use this Jessam brand and I figured, well, if they're using it, maybe I should use it too, even though it costs a lot of money. So this thing altogether be uh, not including the uh, router motor, which is a DeWalt DW618, came up to about $1,300 with sales tax included. So I know in a previous video, I had mentioned that I wasn't gonna be using the fence guard because I didn't think I needed it. However, that quickly turned because I was trying to find a universal solution that was inexpensive for being able to do uh, dust collection. Now, the kit that I bought it came with this kit here that comes with the connector to remove the little pieces for the top for like dust collecting. And what they are, they're just plastic pieces that lock into the plate so that this way you can avoid as much dust as possible. That is really convenient if you wanna to try to avoid getting any kind of debris into your router motor and eventually breaking it, cause it could happen. Now, unfortunately, like I had mentioned earlier, I couldn't find a really good inexpensive universal dust collection system for this specific table. I even tried using like a rectangular piece for my vacuum and tried to attach it to the front and it wasn't working because number one, my shop vacuum that I have, is only four horsepower and apparently the suction power, which is it's called CFM, it's at a rating of 80 and I need something way stronger than that. So since I've already adapted to the DeWalt family, I figured I would go with the DeWalt DWV012, which has a CFM suction rating of, I believe it's 140, which is five CFM stronger than the Fistool dust collection systems that they have, which costs even more money. So that vacuum though, is not cheap. It's about 600 bucks, so it is kind of expensive. But what I like about it is that you can adjust the suction power with the little turn of a knob and I found that convenient because that vacuum has a 15 amp hour rating at max output. And the DW618 router motor that I have here at its maximum speed is 12 amps, which exceeds the 20 amp capacity of my circuit breaker, meaning it would trigger it off. So I have to be real careful on how I use the router and at what speed I use it because that determines the amps that you're using from your current system or your current uh, circuit breaker and also determine how much suction power I need for the dust to be collected from at least six inches away from the router. Again, uh, this fence guard is the reason why I ended up having to buy it because of the whole dust collection thing. This has a two and a half inch uh, attachment on the back, like a little plate where you can attach your vacuum hose to it and be able to have it you know, attached to a vacuum so it can turn on at the same time with that power tech switch here. And this was the only solution. Now, the only bad thing about having this is that if you're gonna do larger pieces of, of wood materials, like for example, if you're gonna make some frames for your subwoofer boxes, you have to remove this because there's no way that you're gonna have 
six inches of clearance <laughs> between this even if this was all the way back and i had the table coming out a bit more you're going to have a hard time with this so this is good for if you're doing small things like small speaker rings if you want to recess them or make some really small trim based stuff then yeah you can definitely get away with this but otherwise there will be times where this is going to have to be pulled away and you're going to have to deal with dust which is the reason why i recommend this kit with this uh plates here so you can have the least amount of dust along with the vacuum attachment to avoid getting uh, dust and debris into your router motor and eventually reducing the life of the motor. This is pretty much it for the router table. If you guys have any questions about them, you guys know what to do. Make sure you comment below and I will go ahead and answer things for you. It might take me a little bit because I have two accounts on my smartphone. I have my regular media account and then I have my average guy 1983 account. And the majority of the time I'm on my regular account for media. So um, again, I will periodically be checking uh, my uh, channel and stuff and see if I see any comments at all about this stuff. So let's go ahead and move on over to the rack that I have here on the wall. Alrighty, so right here, you guys already know, I've already showed you guys this once before, but this is my template system that I have from Mobile Solutions. I do not have all of the router templates i wish i did but i don't i just don't have all the space necessary to be able to have them in here but i did want to show you guys that this is pretty much what i have i do know how to use these they're not that difficult to use they all connect to a system and um yeah it's very easy to use and these are perfect for using with the router when you want to do traceovers again the only thing that's missing here would be uh anything that has to do with the kicker speakers for the square ones like the l7s those are the only type of templates that uh, mobile solutions doesn't really have but it's a square so it's not that hard to cut out you know uh, versus a circle but anyways this is exactly what i just wanted to show you guys real quick another thing i do recommend that i didn't mention was this router plate from uh mobile solutions this one's called the smart frame uh sled which is the sfs animal that one worked work really good for protecting your hands from uh, getting possible cuts on them from the router and it would actually help with giving you a more stability on making your cuts when you're doing top cuts with your router so like it, let's say you're making a speaker ring and you need to uh, use a rabbiting bit so that you can recess them this would be a great help for that you would just put maybe like some half inch little steps on the inside of it with the speaker ring and then with the uh, double-sided tape and then add the speaker ring on so this way the the flush trim ring would actually just go over the actual speaker ring from the inside and just cut out the necessary material so that's really good for that okay so like you guys already seen before um i have these uh dewalt charging uh stations i decided to put up four i have more chargers but i didn't need the uh the other ones because they're the models that uh are like slow trickle charging these ones can charge up to 60s under fast charging as well as the 20s which is why i went with these ones now these are expensive they're not cheap uh you're looking at hundreds of dollars just with these chargers as well as these outlets that i made which are uh weather resistant uh, gfci and i have several of them throughout the basement that i connected to a 20 amp circuit and i have them uh signed up for uh basically whatever tools that i need to connect for the desk and the table okay so right here i have my soldering station i have two of them so one of them it's like a uh, scissor almost like a pincher type uh soldering you can see that right there like this this is really good for when you're trying to modify led lights for let's say a dashboard and you're trying to uh, change your leds from like a green or yellow color to like a blue red or whatever color you want to uh, change it to this is perfect for doing that and both of them heat up at the same time so this is a yihua 938d i did get this off of uh, ebay but they do have these on amazon if you want to get them um that's another thing i did want to talk to you guys real quick um i do not want to share any links with amazon because amazon banned me from being able to do reviews they basically told me that they caught me apparently 
um, being paid by sellers for giving them a five star rating and speaking good about the product. Uh, so apparently on Amazon, you can't be genuinely happy with a product because otherwise you sound too suspicious. Now to make things clear, I've never gotten a single cent from a seller, but it was a very one sided type of uh, situation. And I'll go ahead and post up the image or the screenshot of what they basically told me. I tried fighting this and I even told them to show me proof that I actually did that. And they refused by sending me an email telling me that they don't have to show me proof about their findings and everything was very one sided. So I'm very dissatisfied with what happened with Amazon and uh, I will not be sharing any kind of links through Amazon. So if I were you, I would just look at the model numbers of the stuff that I have and try to find your own solution for this. And again, I apologize for all the people who like to have links for stuff, but since I'm not a brand ambassador of any kind, I do not want to like um, share anything anymore unless I'm going to start getting some kind of light here. And I know it sucks. I know that I'm starting to sound a little bit greedy and stuff, but the truth is that after going through all that trouble, like I just really don't feel like hassling with stuff again I apologize but that's just the way it is um let me go ahead and show you guys the other little soldering station this one is my favorite soldering gun because this one has the same thing like the other one that has a temperature uh set up and you can do it in a uh Fahrenheit which is what we use here in the U.S. or you can use uh, Celsius and you can see the wear <laughs> on my soldering gun because I use it very very often and it's really easy to use. You turn it on and it literally tells you the uh, percentage there of where it's supposed to be. See how it's already rising really quickly. And I have it set at 700 because that's where my, um, my solder uh, can heat up to when it comes to the temp. I also have a little light at the top here to help me be able to see uh, small things that I have to solder and yeah. So let's go ahead and go with what I have in my drawer so I can show you guys some of the products I have and give you guys an explanation of how I even came about to get those products. All right, so here's my uh, drawer where I have all of my um, devices that I use for my vehicles. Uh, this one is just for auto repair. This is just an Actron Auto Scanner Plus. Uh, this one has the color screen and I believe it's the latest model that they have. And um, I've used it a couple of times for my flex just to make sure that I remove a code that I accidentally had on there because I forgot to reconnect something when I installed my KNN filter uh, intake system. So it worked. So um, I'm gonna be using this for my Park Avenue to figure out what else is wrong with the car and uh, rescan it once I start getting it working and go from there because there's a lot of things that need to be fixed on that car, which I will explain uh, later on in the video. Uh, this is the SMD Distortion Detector Plus. I would highly recommend you get one of these if you want to be able to set your gains properly. I know that there's a lot of people that bash the product because you could only set your gains at 1000 hertz for mids and highs and 40 hertz for subwoofers. And But this is a really good tool to use. You can also use this for an overlap to make your subwoofer sound a little bit louder. Yes, it does create some distortion, but then again, if you have your subwoofer in the trunk, you're not really going to hear that distortion and all you're going to hear is the bass. But if you have it inside of a car like me where I have the uh, enclosure inside of the flex and you can hear it, you will hear some clipping. So you just kind of, you know, figure out how to properly use this tool with the uh, with your amplifier gain settings and go from there. But this is a great tool, a little expensive for what it is, but I highly recommend it either this one or the lower level one that's a little bit more affordable. This is the SMD audio multimeter amm1 and this one allows you to be able to check your rms wattage in real time on your amplifiers as long as you connect one of the cables from your speaker box into this hole here the reason why i got this was because um i was trying to do a collaboration with derek from williston audio labs he goes by big d Wiz, and um i offered to uh purchase some vxi amplifiers send them to him so he can do a uh, uh you know a rms watts rating on them the benefit for both of us would have been him having content on expensive vxi amplifiers and me having results of what my um rms watts would be in a perfect world scenario um having steady voltage as well as a steady uh ohm load 
Unfortunately, um, he rejected my offer, at least in a polite manner. He was the only one who replied out of everybody I sent the comment to. So I would be lying if I said that um, my feelings weren't hurt because <laughs> I am human when he rejected my offer because he's still doing amp testings for his friends. But I guess since I'm not one of his friends or part of the kicker club, you know, I figured that's probably why he rejected my offer. So he gave me the courage to just cough out the 500 plus dollars and just buy one of these myself and do my own testings in the future. So that's where this came about. But um, yeah, I've only used it one time to test the uh, HD amp that I have in my car that was kind of messing around with the uh, uh, output of the speaker on the passenger side in the front. Uh, but that's about it for that part of the story. Um, this one here, and I'm not saying this to put the dude on blast at all, but I'm just, you know, saying that it kind of sucks that you try to collaborate with people and you get rejected. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, I chose to give up on that, on trying to collaborate with anyone. But, uh, yeah, this is why I bought that tool. Uh, this one here is a really nice one. I needed to just upgrade my, uh, current multimeter that I had from AutoZone. I bought this one. This one was a little expensive, but it's really nice. It has a lot of features. It has a nice, uh... Uh, digital display with the uh, black and white OLED type screen on it so you can see the numbers better and it has a lot of uh, features including voltage uh, AC voltage as well as uh, conduit so like what you uh, would see from the back of a wire to the front of wire to see if there's something disconnected in between you would find out with that tool and then finally instead of using <laughs> uh, my paper designed um, printer labels i decided to buy myself a label maker from brother so this is what i have now and the only thing is that you have to have multiple tapes of different sizes and they come in cartridges in order to be able to uh, get the correct size that you need for whatever label you're making so other than that that's pretty much it what i have here so again i apologize that this is something you don't really want to be seeing or hearing uh, you're more than welcome to exit out of the video at any time. Uh, you're not, you know, required to finish watching, but it would be nice if you do. And here I just have all of my stuff when it comes to um, things like wire ferrules and uh, butt connectors and small little amounts of uh, heat shrink, etc. Wire cutters. That's all I have in here. Regular standard stuff. I have a switch here that I want to possibly install into my ford flex to be switching between my w7 12 and my 10 w6 subwoofer whenever i want to swap you know subwoofers and stuff for testing and stuff it would be great to have something like this installed the only problem is that it's really big it looks this big <laughs> so uh basically what you do is you connect the positive sides of each subwoofer one on each side one on this side and one on this side and then one wire goes at the top from the amplifier uh, in a, uh, basically you would have to just wiretap from here to here with one side connected to the amplifier, the other two connect to subwoofer one and subwoofer two. And in the front, you can easily switch from one subwoofer to off to the second subwoofer for testing, which I think is really convenient to have for something like my Flex where I want to just switch subwoofers and stuff. So I'm not sure when I'm going to install that. I'm still debating on what I'm gonna do with the HD amps as well as the uh, VXI amplifiers I'm planning on buying. In this drawer, I basically just have some Tessa tape, a bunch of HDMI wires, and the cables for the, um, fix, 80, uh, the fix 86 and the uh, Tweak 88. And I have a bunch of pry tools in there and zip ties, nothing too big. In the bottom, I just have extra stuff like manuals and a template here to be able to make another uh router table for you know a customized table that you might want to do which i recommend if you want to use a a bench type table instead of buying something like the jessam router table so let's go ahead and move on over to the cabinet system and i'll show you guys what's up with that i was going to leave this out but i figured i would share it because i plan on putting this rack inside of my shed and putting another type of drawer system here to have more space for more uh like router bits and things like that but in the bottom you can see my vacuum that i have there and then also my um my pneumatic air pressure thing that can be used for multiple stuff like a nail gun uh you can use it for a stapler you can use it for putting air on your tires etc 
But uh, I figured I would just share this real quick in case you want to wreck. I got this at Walmart for about $100, so this was really cheap. But um, it's a little flimsy and uh, it easily comes apart if you are not careful when you pull it out. So I do plan on putting it in my uh, shed, which is outside of the house in the backyard and um, maybe put some different stuff in there and put another type of uh, husky type drawer like this one right here that you already seen uh, in this side over here and uh, just make my space a little bit better. Okay, so now we're over here with the cabinet system. Now I know I had mentioned that I wanted to get the Husky branded cabinet system, but I'm really glad I went with this one instead. This one is huge and um, I mean really, really big. Um, from that corner over there to this corner over here, you're looking at about 12 feet and three inches and um, that's including the water heater. And um, this whole cabinet system is about 120 inches or so. So I was able to get the uh, cabinet system from that corner and it's literally touching the edge of the water heater all the way to this side, touching uh, the uh, power outlet that I put right there at the very top to be able to have all of my gear right here powered up. So this is a really nice cab uh, cabinet system. This one was about $2,200 and some change, including sales tax. Now. I didn't buy this in cash. I used uh, my Amazon card to be able to purchase this off of Amazon. So I did get lucky with 0% uh, interest financing for 24 months. So it's basically like I'm borrowing money for myself. I only go for offers like this when I do not have to pay any kind of interest at all on a card. That's the only reason I was able to buy this versus the Husky one. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I have in the cabinets and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, for this uh, show, I'm gonna be uh, going like in tripod mode and show you guys what I have at the very top. Um, I have a little bit of space and like you can see from my lights that I have there, there's only about two inches of space. And I did happen to uh, install an AC vent after all in here. So that is being powered by an AC Infinity uh, Cloudline S6 motor because when I tapped into my air conditioning line the air that was blowing through there was too weak and I needed something stronger to be able to push air in here when uh, during the summertime but you guys can see here how very tight of a space I have at the very top of the cabinet and right over here you can see where I have the power outlets coming out from there okay and also over here against the uh, uh, water heater, you guys can see it's literally touching <laughs> the edge of the water heater, but I was able to accomplish my goal of utilizing all the space inside of this basement. So this is pretty much it. This is why I felt comfortable making this video. So again, getting back to the first cabinet, I have all of my detailing supplies and cleaning supplies for, uh, working on both the Park Avenue and the Ford Flex. This is all of my supplies for detailing. So, and I, it, everything looks new because I clean everything back up and I put them back in their bags. That, that's just a habit of mine. But you guys can see all the products that I have here. Um, I've had this for many years as well as this, and I'm going to be using these two products to clean up all the, um, weird uh, caked on what looks like efflorescence or like uh, uh, oxidation of some sort on my chrome rims on my Park Avenue. I'll show you guys that in a bit too because uh, that car is going to need a lot of love and a lot of work and uh, that's going to be some good content for the channel moving forward. Uh, in the bottom here, uh, I don't want to get too close because I forgot to uh, remove my address from there, but in this one I have the original uh, AC Delco fuel pump for the Park Avenue. My car is the supercharged version and apparently the uh, pump that the shop that I went to a while back to uh, put on was the one for the base model. So it was still having trouble with hesitation when I would push on the gas pedal, it would kind of uh, like kind of like stutter a little bit. And I felt that, you know, kind of bad and then the car eventually broke down. So I do have uh, several things that I'm going to be changing out. 
like the water holes for the radiator. I bought the uh, ZZ Performance uh, top and bottom uh, holes and I'm going with a red and black theme for my car audio wiring system install. So I'm gonna be rewiring a bunch of stuff. And I have things here to work on the vehicle, including new brake pads, um, cross-drilled and slotted rotors, and uh, several other things that I will show you guys underneath the hood once we go outside. But this is gonna be stuff that's going to be installed into the Park Avenue. In the bottom, I just have, you know, some jack stands. I've had those for a very long time. Uh, they're not that heavy duty for the Park Avenue. The Park Avenue, I think it's a, uh, uh, either two tons or maybe four tons or something like that. But I kind of rather have something a little bit more heavy duty for that. And that's pretty much all I have in there. Uh, up here, this is where I decided to put this rack. This took me a little bit. And I shared some pictures under the community blog. So if you guys want to see what the back of this looks like, um, make sure you go to the community blog on your uh, smartphone and check those pictures out. Uh, so as you guys can see here, this is all my camera gear stuff, all the batteries that I use. I don't put them to charge unless I know that I'm going to be using them a day or two before. So uh, if I'm going to be using, for example, today is Sunday, um, March 19th, right? Tomorrow's the first day of spring, which is March 20th. If uh, I am going to be making a video in the next two days, then I would grab the batteries now and put them in their chargers so I know exactly what I'm going to use. This device here is what controls the AC uh, motor from uh, the air conditioning system. And you can see the time. It is 5.30 p.m. And it is off and the degrees inside of the basement is 67 and the humidity is at 60%. The sensor, which is right there, is actually right over here so that is the sensor that detects all of the uh, temperature and I did that and I put it right here in this spot because this is where I hang out when I do my live streams so other than that these are all the stuff from the Sony batteries for the Alpha 7 IV which I found that if I would have known in advance that I could have gotten this big ass battery here this FX Nano 3 and solve my battery issue problems instead of buying multiple batteries, I would have never bought these chargers, to be fair. I would have just bought this. So if you're thinking about picking up a camera and you're able to use something like a, a D-tap line, I would highly recommend one of these big ass batteries. You'll have endless hours, at least 10 hours of usage on your camera. By then, your camera will pretty much overheat before it even reaches a dead battery. So <laughs> other than that, there's that. I have the um, some Nanlite stuff here, a GoPro light, the GoPro battery charger there, uh, an outlet thing to connect other stuff, my um, Google Home Hub to make sure that I can keep an eye on all of my security stuff that I have in here because I have cameras around the house, including the basement. Um, and then I have my Nanlite Pavel Tube 2s, which are really convenient for giving, you know, the background when I make a video, some pizzazz with color. And uh, that's about it for that. Okay, so let's go on over to the top drawer here. In this drawer, I just have all of my bags and cases for the camera gear that I use. And in the bottom here, I do have a uh, D-tap line from Condor Blue that I'm gonna be using for my cameras as well as other little things like the uh, YOLO box, Pro box in the back, should I ever choose to want to sell it. Um, I got that just because I wanted to do live streams, but only like four people attended the last one. And that was kind of like, you know, a downer. Anyways, right here, I have all of my camera gear. You can see my uh, Sony Alpha 7 IV here and my YOLO box Pro. In the bottom, you can see the Sony ZV-E10, which I also use. The monitor that I use outdoors whenever I'm using this camera up here. Uh, the cable from, what's this guy called? Uh, Gerald Undone, because I wanted to show some, uh, some support to him. And I uh, have the uh, piece of shit GoPro Hero 10 that I fucking hate. Um, I don't like it because it overheats at 4K60. And then this is a keyboard that I forgot to mention that you can use with the Yola Box Pro uh wirelessly through the usb uh, a connector and then right here you can see the back of it this one is the model number k 
K360 and I got it from Best Buy just in case you want to figure it out or find out where you get it at. And right there you can see it does come with batteries and it has a little storage compartment for the USB dongle. So it's very convenient if you want to get into that and do live streaming or whatever, you know. Um, I have my little issues there. And again, you can see all the other cables that I have that I showed you guys in the previous video. And this is where I usually keep all my uh, uh, main camera gear. So what I'm using right now is actually my uh, <laughs> Samsung Galaxy Note 20. You can see it there connected through USB-C from the uh, wireless go to with the USB-C cable directly into the phone for audio. So with that said, let's go to this drawer here. In here, I don't really have much. Um, this is the little replacement thingies, uh, strips for the uh, EL wiring for the ambient lighting and the flex. Um, they do occasionally blow out, so I have to keep changing them, which kind of sucks, but that's why I bought multiple. Um, I have my rebadged uh, 3.8 L67 for the uh, Park Avenue. And here I have more stuff that has to do for the Park Avenue, including little um, plugs for the outlets, the original lights from the turn signals. In this drawer, I have all of the vacuum supplies and other screws and things that I didn't get to use, including my original little Tsunami branded distribution block with the fuses under that I used in my Genesis build, which I only had two amps at that time. Over here, I have all of this uh, extra tools, including scissors and stuff to be able to uh, do my car audio stuff, including this for the Dremel cutting tool and stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, open this one up because in this one is where I have all the cool stuff. Now, up at the top, you just see some regular supplies that I have. I do have that 99% isopropyl alcohol, which is perfect for removing stuff, cleaning things up really well. It works great to get rid of stuff versus the 70% one. And uh, I have uh, the glue that I need to re-carpet my, uh, my 12W7 uh, box that my cat's ruined. So um, I have that ready to start working on that. And over here is all the products pretty much that are going to be installed in my 2002 Buick Park Avenue build. Everything minus these speakers. These speakers I plan to use for a little side project but these um, three sets of JL Audio C5 three-way components are going to go into the Park Avenue. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to be putting one box in one side of the door plus one of these. And um, in the back, it's going to use this exact set here with uh, two HD 600 slash fours. Um, one of the Tweak 88s that's in the Flex will be coming out of there and going into this uh, Park Avenue build because these ones require a specific frequency range for them to work and I don't want to blow them out. I do have the old radio I took out of it. This is a Clarion NX702. I decided to like make sure that I put it in a nice bag and uh, keep it away from crazy temperatures just to make sure that it still works. This is a very old radio, but it looks really cool. I like the UI. Here you can see the uh, new camera that I'm going to be installing. I've been hoarding some of this stuff for a very long time. I also got the uh, audio control epicenter 1 million strong limited edition. I only paid $200 for this one, which was great. And I got the uh, 0418 number one out of 5,000. And right here I have some uh, fans that are going to be powered into uh, keeping the amplifiers cooled inside of the trunk. And up here, moving this out of the way, you can see the uh, SMD VU DINs. I have four of these and uh, I've showed this before to you guys, but I have the, um, what is it here real quick? Let me go ahead and just get this out real quick. Okay, so this is what I have in the box. These are the SMD VU DINs. The reason why this one is open and these ones are sealed is because this one here was one of my old ones. And the other three that I had from like 2017, were actually uh, still sealed in their boxes. So what he did was he had some of these already pre-done and this one here, he did for me. And the cool part is that he wasn't offering these yet when he first announced them, but he did me a solid. So thank you, Steve Mead, for hooking me up with, uh, with this. And again, I did pay him, so 
uh, you know, for doing the work, but at least he was able to do this. If you guys know Steve Mead, he's not the kind of person that does things for people that he doesn't know other than friends. And then a huge shout out over to uh, Sparked Innovations, man. Sparked Innovations did this for me. Check this out. Uh, this is something with, that was custom made with my YouTube channel name. And they made this for my output meter. So if you guys already guessed it, yes, I will be putting two subwoofers in my 2002 Buick Park Avenue. My decision hasn't been 100% final on this though. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with two 13W7s or if I'm going to go with the Kicker uh, L7 Solo Xs yet as you know, the, the experience between the Kicker clan and myself hasn't been all that great. So um, it kind of makes me want to steer away from Kicker even though I used to love Kicker in the past because I had the uh, Solo Barrick L712s back in 2008. But uh, I don't really want to be around a community that only sticks to themselves and don't welcome outsiders. So I may just go ahead and stick with the 13W7s. I'm not 100% sure yet. Plus Kicker still doesn't want to share uh, any information about um, what size speaker box you need for the 12s or the 15s. And uh, when I get started with work, I usually like to do things in advance and plan out my stuff in order to be able to get, you know, some of this stuff going and uh, start pre-installing everything into my car. But anyways, this is what's going in there along with some of this stuff here, which is the FBX 12 and the RBX 4 channel for the Park Avenue as well. So um, again, uh, this is what I currently have in my uh, 2019 Ford Flex. And I do have an 8W7 there that I had for a very long time, since like 2014. I have not installed the fix 86 yet into the um, flex yet or the VXI hub because I don't have the VXI amplifiers yet and in the bottom I have a bunch of 12 gauge wire because I also am into home theater stuff and some new concept sound deadening colossal edition stuff in the bottom so that's pretty much all I have in the drawer everything that's going to go into the park avenue um, these DRC 205 knobs I bought um, two extra ones because I wasn't sure if my DRC 205 knobs were failing with the Tweak 88s because even today in March of 2023, I still occasionally have trouble with the Tweak 88s malfunctioning and shutting down my uh, presets or turning them off. And I have to plug the computer back in and turn them back on. And I think it's annoying. Uh, JL refuses to acknowledge that their uh, Tweak 88s have a hardware problem and they keep trying to blame my wiring. But how could it be my wiring if everything is zip tied down? Uh, the last DRC-205, uh, what I bought because I was planning on doing a giveaway when I reach a specific subscriber count uh, of a VX-1000 slash 5i and a DRC-205, which you see there. I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna ever do that or not because um, in all honesty, the money would come out of me since I'm not a brand ambassador. So uh, as long as I'm not a brand ambassador from somebody willing to hook me up with something and be able to do like a giveaway for another person, then um, it might be very difficult for me to cough out that much money to do a giveaway. So if I ever do a giveaway, it would be one of these DRC 205 knobs and a VX 1000 slash 5i, which my wife would probably slap the shit out of me for giving away money like that. But uh, that's just the kind of person I am. If I was rich, everybody on my channel would have one of those freaking VXI amplifiers because I think the JL gear, even though it's expensive, I think it's wonderful technology. Yeah, it has its hiccups, but I like the stuff and I love the design of their speakers, including the C7s, which sound amazing when you can tune them right. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's a love and hate relationship with this company. <laughs> Cause uh, the difference between Kicker and JL is that JL focuses mainly on their uh, shop, you know, partners because they're trying to get them to make money versus their consumers. And Kicker does both consumer and shops. And I appreciate that about that. They don't mind sharing pictures of people's builds even though they don't look all that great. Uh, they, they love that, you know, they know that their customer base is mainly people and not just shops, you know? And JL seems more corporate than Kicker. Kicker seems more friendly, which is why I was trying to uh, interact with some of them, but it kind of backfired on me. So, oh well, life goes on, right? 
anyways now that i'm done showing you guys all of this let me show you guys my wall real quick of my other tools all right so this is the last piece of my little puzzle here actually upgraded my uh, wall again from the left side i removed the metal pegboard that i had in there and that's what's inside of the cabinet system with all of the uh, discs for the polishing and i did this because this was better for me i needed something where i can put my tools and unfortunately i don't have all the necessary hooks that i need for the rest of the tools i have some tools still put away and as you guys can see right here like um i have an oscillator <laughs> that in reality should be like somewhere right here to like make it uh, easier to access instead of having it on top of another tool but um i have all of this including hammers i actually have three different ones this one and two other ones that are uh thicker gauge and i would like to have these put in a specific wall um but i have everything here but you guys can see from my heat guns uh, two portables and one powered my really reliable uh, jigsaw i have my grinder that i use for putting up this wall on the wall and again i'm not sponsored by flow wall okay at all everything that you've seen so far i purchased myself over time but i recommend their slat walls man um the best time to shop is when you can get them on sale for like under $300, like $220 something plus tax and shipping. Um, they're really solid for what they are. I do have to warn you though, and let you know that if you have your pegboard somewhere this high, your slab board a little bit high and you drop it on a concrete floor, it could shatter. So you need to be careful with that because this is made out of like plastic or some kind of plastic. I'm not sure, it's, not, it's definitely not ABS, but it's a, a little brittle when it comes to it falling, so it can shatter quite easily. However, weight-wise, it can handle a lot of weight. So especially if you have them properly anchored to your wall. In this case, it's in a cement wall. So I highly recommend this Flow Wall brand if you wanna get something sturdy that can keep your stuff very well secured. And their hooks. Um, they have different size hooks from four inch, uh, eight inch, and they even have different baskets that you can get for putting stuff into them, which I do plan to buy. Um, there's a lot of things I need to buy from them hook wise to finish uh, putting this wall together and putting all my tools up. But I highly recommend this wall uh, from the Flow Wall brand. Again, not sponsored, but from my experience, these things work great. They're also weather resistant. So if water comes down from the basement because it's not sealed, you don't have to worry about this thing brittling up because it can handle it so i highly recommend this if you want to go for something like this um let me go ahead and show you guys the bottom area so you guys can see what else i have in the bottom here this isn't nothing too big when it comes to car stuff i guess this would be ideal um this is just a big led light strip you can open it up just like this and you can attach this to your engine bay or you can even put it inside of your car this thing is twistable so you can twist these like this and have this end on one side of your car with the door open and on the opposite side so this is really convenient for the way um, it works and then when you're done with it it closes up just like this and you could put it back so i think this is pretty awesome now in case you're wondering what this is the model number is dcl 045 and it says it's a hood light and it uses a 20 volt battery. Over here, I have a reciprocator uh, saw that's uh, wired. And then right here, I have my pesticide gallon thing because I have an ant problem in my house. During the summer, they like to get into my house and get into my kids' cereal boxes and stuff. So I have to try to get rid of them. And uh, I have to go underneath the house and use this for that. But other than that, that's what I have here. And there is more tools, but unfortunately, because I'm missing a lot of those uh, hooks right there that you see i can't finish putting up my stuff on this wall but uh that's the last of the stuff that i have to show you guys so now that i have this done let's go on over to the park avenue so you guys can see what this project for spring is going to be and it also needs to stop raining so um let's go to that now all righty ladies and gentlemen so we are outside and there will be a lot of noise so i'll try to do my best to talk more into the microphone but this is my project car <laughs> As you guys can see, it looks pretty in bad shape, <laughs> but um, this is what a project car usually looks like. Uh, it's usually a car that's pretty beat up that you have to invest a lot of money into and fix. And I wanted to show you guys some of the things that are gonna have to get fixed on it. 
one thing for sure that i can tell you right now that i did not do is that damage there i actually bought the car like that from an armenian dealership called gp motors located in glendale california i had a lot of trouble with them because i bought the car as is with no warranty but they failed to list all the problems that the vehicle had uh prior to selling it and marking it as uh you know as is with no warranty here in the state of california if you're a dealer uh you are required to do uh documentation on all the problems that are wrong with the vehicle prior to listing the car as is with no warranty for sale uh this way the buyer knows exactly what's wrong with the car and uh they don't come back and hunt your ass <laughs> like the way i had to in order to get this car semi fixed so um this is the results of buying a car as is without warranty uh now um in 2023 it's not even a good time to consider buying a used car because even the used car market has gone up substantially to the point where you're basically buying a used car for the price of a basic trim model you uh, new car so it's not really convenient so for me i prefer to invest my money in this car getting it running now on the odometer i do have 144,000 miles in it when i bought it it had 126,000 or 129,000. so i didn't drive it for that long um with that said though uh here's everything that has to be done besides a paint job and uh fixings of some dents we have the uh rotors and brakes that have to be changed up because as you guys can see there it is very 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 bad these are the new concepts uh original um like geomet type rotors and uh they worked really well when i was actually uh using the car so as you guys can see like the calipers are still good uh the rams wise they do need some um, some attention you can see some of that white crud i talked to you guys about that i'm going to be uh, cleaning up with those products i showed you earlier all of these trims i already have these ready they're brand new the ones that i have inside of my uh, house and i will be replacing these old ones that are already like broken for example uh, from age but that's what we're looking at with that in the rear we also have it looking the same so the rotors are really rusted that's one of the things that has to get changed out and again the reason why the car looks this low is because the air from the uh, shock has already depleted there is a um like an air compressor inside that lifts up the uh thing i will be replacing those two in the videos upcoming during the spring bus you guys can see right now it's been raining and it hasn't stopped so um let me go ahead and show you guys the engine compartment and i'll be right back with you guys okay so here's the engine compartment and i've already started on some of the work so i'm using the zz performance high voltage uh ignition coil packs and i have their 10 millimeter cables for the spark plugs i do have to change the spark plugs again just to make sure that none of them have any kind of corrosion or rust since the car's been sitting for 10 years and here you guys can see corrosion on the wires all of this is going to get changed out you guys can see how badly this looks so this is getting changed out this cable is connected to the starter so i will be replacing the power cables as well from the starter which is down there somewhere and uh, including the ground cable that looks pretty messed up i will be using a d3400 battery from excess power so all the uh, uh, all the power wires will be upgraded including the alternator wire the alternator will be a MacMan 320 amp hour uh, alternator and I already have some four out wire that I'm going to be using for the entire system just like I did on my flex build. Like you guys have seen, I'm going with a red and black theme for this Park Avenue. On the Ford Flex, I did blue and black. So this is just by choice. But anyways, this is exactly what I have to work with. What happened with the car was it was having a fuel pump problem after that i started reporting some issues with the mass airflow sensor which i've already replaced then i said something about the egr valve i changed that and the pcv valve as well so a lot of things have been changed out on this thing off camera however the fuel pump the uh, brakes the cables for the um everything else including this i might end up having to change this or just clean it up as good as i can but inside of here 
there is a lot of gunk like you can see there there's just a lot of like brown stuff inside i have to really deep clean the crap out of this uh radiator and that includes probably the uh engine block as well so that's going to be some work part of it will be posted on youtube here on my channel under the uh, park avenue project and some of it won't let me show you guys the inside on the inside it needs a lot of work you guys can kind of see in here how i had some of my uh stuff that i was starting to work on a while back uh there isn't that much clearance between here and the door so i can't really change this design however i found a new method of redoing this so i am going to redo this and i will be showing that under the park avenue uh, project tab on my channel so again there's a lot of stuff in here that needs to be fixed a lot of things a lot of stuff so this is content that's going to be going again to the park avenue project so if you're into park avenues or you just want to see how i'm going to restore a car that hasn't been driven in 10 years or started in 10 years then keep a tab out for the content that's going to be coming up on the channel Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen so this is going to conclude my video of the basement tour as well as my project coming up for the springtime as long as it stops raining i should be able to start working on the park avenue and getting things changed out because i can't work on it if it's raining so um just keep an eye out if you haven't clicked on the little bell notification make sure you guys do so that this way if you want to keep an eye on the project i'm doing or if you're a park avenue follower uh, stay tuned and just keep an eye out on the 2002 Buick Park Avenue project that I'm doing and uh, we'll go from there now the next video is going to be for digging low which is uh, one of my fellow YouTube subscribers who suggested a um, video on the HD 750 amps power rating so considering I have the AMM-1 we can find out how much that amplifier actually does in real time with a regular vehicle charging system instead of having something like the uh, ad1 where you have to have like a freaking power plant in order to get like the perfect world scenario of voltage as well as a single um tone generated frequency and also ohm load so this will be really fun so the video that's going to be coming up next as long as it stops raining is going to be for you digging low have a good one and i'll see you guys on the next one peace